Knowledge and Human Interests German, und Interesse, is a 1968 book by the German philosopher Jürgen Habermas, in which the author gives an account of the development of the modern natural and human sciences. He criticizes Sigmund Freud, arguing that psychoanalysis is a branch of the humanities rather than a science, and provides a critique of Friedrich Nietzsche. Habermas's first major systematic work, Knowledge and Human Interests has been compared to books such as the philosopher Paul Ricoeur's Freud and Philosophy 1965. It received positive reviews, which identified it as forming part of an important body of work. However, critics have found Habermas's attempt to discuss the relationship between knowledge and human interests unsatisfactory, and his work obscure in style. Though some commentators have found his discussion of Freud valuable, Habermas's interpretation of Freud has been criticized by the philosopher Adolf Grunbaum in The Foundations of Psychoanalysis 1984. <laughs> Topic. Background According to Habermas, he first expounded the views he developed in the book in his Frankfurt inaugural address of June 1965, while his discussion of positivism, pragmatism and historicism had its origins in lectures he delivered in Heidelberg in 1963 and 1964. He expressed his indebtedness to the philosopher Karl Otto Appel and the psychoanalyst Alexander Mitscherlich and Alfred Lorenzer. Summary. Habermas describes his work as, "...a historically oriented attempt to reconstruct the prehistory of modern positivism with the systematic intention of analyzing the connections between knowledge and human interests." Habermas writes that psychoanalysis occupies an important place as an example within his framework. Habermas also discusses Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, Karl Marx, Auguste Comte, Ernst Mach, Charles Sanders Peirce, Wilhelm Dilthey, and provides a critique of Friedrich Nietzsche. Topic: <laughs> Publication history. Knowledge and Human Interests was first published by Surkamp Verlag in 1968, with the exception of its appendix, which was first published in Merker in 1965. In 1972, the book was published in English translation by Heinemann Educational Books. In 1987, an English edition was published by Polity Press in association with Blackwell Publishers. Reception Mainstream media Knowledge and Human Interests was reviewed by the philosopher Alan Ryan in the New York Review of Books. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Academic Journals. Knowledge and Human Interests received positive reviews from Fred E. Jant in the Journal of Applied Communications Research and Thomas B. Farrell in the Quarterly Journal of Speech and a mixed review from the sociologist Stephen Lukes in the British Journal of Sociology. The book was also reviewed by the sociologist David Martin in the Jewish Journal of Sociology, the sociologist Anthony Giddens in the American Journal of Sociology, and Lawrence Hazelrig in Current Perspectives in Social Theory, and discussed by Paul Ricoeur in the Journal of the American Psychoanalytic Association, Rainer Nagel, Roland Reinhardt, and Roger Blood in New German Critique, Kenneth Colburn Jr. in Sociological Inquiry, Stephen Vogel in Praxis International, Richard Tinning in Quest, Ananda Kumar Jiri in the European Journal of Social Theory, Jennifer Scurro in the Oral History Review, and Miriam N. Torres and Sylvia E. Morais in the International Journal of Action Research. In Philosophy of the Social Sciences, it received discussions from Stephen D. Parsons and Michael Power. Jant found the book, and Habermas's work in general, promising, though he wrote that it was not easy to assess it, because of Habermas's competence in fields ranging from the logic of science to the sociology of knowledge. Farrell found the book ambitious in its goals and dispassionate in its approach. He believed that it formed part of a body of work which "...comprises a dialectic sufficiently rigorous to indict and perhaps dislodge behavioral and scientific theories of communication." Lukes found the book disappointing. He wrote that its style is unnecessarily obscure and high-flown, its lack of fine-grained philosophical analysis disappointing, and its concentration on the exegesis of other thinkers essentially diversionary." 
He maintained that while Habermas had interesting things to say about several thinkers, especially Freud, most of the exegesis was familiar, while some of it was perverse, such as Habermas's juxtaposition of Comte and Mach under the label of positivism. He credited Habermas with providing a systematic account of his view of his philosophical ancestors, which he considered valuable since Habermas was an important representative of the Frankfurt School, but believed Habermas failed to provide a satisfactory discussion of critical science or a direct discussion of the connection between knowledge and human interests. Recur endorsed Habermas's view that psychoanalysis misunderstood itself by claiming to be a natural science. Colburn questioned whether Habermas's attempt to demonstrate the connection between knowledge and interest helped him to critique positivism. He argued that while, according to Habermas, interest would need to be independent of knowledge, such is not the case, and the distinction between knowledge and interest fails to be warranted. Quote dot. He wrote that Habermas achieves his definition of knowledge semantically, because he is merely redefining objective knowledge as subjective knowledge. Jiri discussed Habermas in relation to the Indian philosopher Sri Aurobindo, attempting to criticize both. Torres and Morice described knowledge and human interests as a seminal work, and credited Habermas with providing the theoretical framework for understanding curriculum and educational research. Power examined and reappraised Habermas's arguments. Topic. Evaluations in books The philosopher Walter Kaufman criticized Habermas for poor scholarship in his treatment of Nietzsche in a 1974 appendix to Nietzsche, philosopher, psychologist, antichrist. He noted that Habermas relied on the inadequate edition of Nietzsche's works prepared by Karl Schlechte. The philosopher Leszek Kolakowski identified knowledge and human interests as one of Habermas's principal books in main currents of Marxism. However, he questioned the accuracy of Habermas's understanding of both psychoanalysis and Marx's work, and criticized Habermas for failing to clearly define the concept of emancipation. The philosopher Adolf Grunbaum criticized Habermas's discussion of the scientific status of psychoanalysis in The Foundations of Psychoanalysis 1984, arguing that Habermas misunderstands psychoanalysis and is ignorant of science and its practices. The philosopher Jeffrey Abramson compared knowledge and human interests to Herbert Marcuse's Eros and Civilization 1955, Norman O. Brown's Life Against Death 1959, Philip Reif's Freud, The Mind of the Moralist 1959, and Paul Recurs Freud and Philosophy 1965 in Liberation and Its Limits, The Moral and Political Thought of Freud 1986. He wrote that these books jointly placed Freud at the center of moral and philosophical inquiry. The philosopher Tom Rockmore described knowledge and human interests as a complex study in Habermas on historical materialism 1989. Writing in 1989, he commented that its status within Habermas's corpus is at present difficult to determine, since although it was widely discussed when it appeared and was regarded as Habermas's most significant work to date, it is unclear whether the book is more important than Habermas's The Theory of Communicative Action 1981. He suggested that because that subsequent study remains dependent on the analysis in knowledge and human interests, the earlier book may eventually be recognized as Habermas's most significant work. He found Habermas's discussion of Freud valuable, but wrote that by attributing a view of knowledge and interest similar to his to Freud, Habermas cloaks his own theory in the prestige of Freud's. The philosopher Jonathan Lear blamed knowledge and human interests, along with Recur's Freud and philosophy, for convincing some psychoanalysts that reasons cannot be causes, a view Lear considers part of a mistaken philosophical tradition, in love and its place in nature. 1990. He credited Grunbaum with effectively criticizing Habermas in the foundations of psychoanalysis. The historian Paul Robinson described Habermas's thinking about the nature of analytic cures as obscure in Freud and his critics 1993. The critic Frederick Cruz criticized Habermas for helping to inspire unscientific defenses of Freud and psychoanalysis in Unauthorized Freud 1998. He also charged him with misunderstanding Freud. He endorsed Grunbaum's criticism of Habermas in The Foundations of Psychoanalysis. The philosopher John Barwise identified knowledge and human interests as Habermas's first major systematic work in the Cambridge Dictionary of Philosophy 1999. 
Topic references topic Footnotes topic Bibliography Books Journals topic External links Knowledge and Human Interest, 1968, PUBL. Polity Press, 1987, Chapter 3, The Idea of the Theory of Knowledge as Social Theory.